Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Jeff Heinrich, and I work for CRS as a senior technical advisor for agriculture. I'm based in our Southern Africa regional office in Zambia. I'd like to share with you our experience with the seed system security assessment. We did the assessment uh, recently in a drought prone area of eastern Zambia. The area has an average rainfall of about 500 millimeters a year, uh, and its typical production system is just maize after maize. Human stunting rates in the area are around 45%, which is really high. So it's an area with high stress and repeated stress. We did the assessment because our partners have been giving different kinds of aid in this area for years. And honestly, they've been doing it again and again. Direct seed distributions have been particularly common. And we decided it would be better to take a step back to try and understand the root causes of the problem in addition to the periodic emergency constraints that occur. We also needed to focus specifically on seed security so that we could develop refined responses to the problems. In regards to the process for implementing the seed system security assessment, it was relatively fast. It just took only two weeks from initial training to formal public feedback sessions, and it only took three to four days per site. So this meant that even busy professionals could join us. And so, for example, we had the head of a seed certification service who participated. We looked at all the different seed systems that farmers used to see if they were functioning well. And these included their own stocks, uh, stocks from agro-dealers, and even seed from local markets. We aimed to be non-biased. And though the assessment was fast, it was also very rigorous. It was evidence-based. There was an interesting innovation in this assessment in that we had an automatic data analysis loop. The data went into Excel spreadsheets and the field findings jumped out immediately, seconds later, in formatted tables, which was great. In terms of the findings, there were lots of important surprises, even for experienced staff. There were also a number of key points for action. One of the major findings was that 95% of the seeds sown for major crops was just for maize, cotton, and groundnuts. And the lack of diversification was really astounding. So to address this, we immediately put in place a set of programs aimed at diversification. And these were linked also with enhanced nutrition. As a first step, we introduced what we call our diner fairs, which are fairs to promote diversity for nutrition and enhanced resilience. There was also some good news on varieties. Overall, 72% of farmers had access to new variety within the last five years. However, with a closer look, we could see that most accessions, uh, over 80%, were either maize or groundnut, and no one had gotten a new variety of beans or cowpeas or pigeon peas. So, we started a program to encourage commercial seed companies to sell a range of legumes, but to sell them in small packs, very small packs, so that farmers could afford them. The programming in the area continues to be influenced by the seed system security assessment. In October of this year, 2014, a meeting has been called in the provincial capital to discuss the problem of groundnut seed supply and starting with the lack of foundation seed for seed production. Addressing this lack of foundation seed had emerged as one of our key recommendations from the assessment. So the seed system security assessment was quick, but it was smart, and practically it really broadened our seed sector program options. It was all very worthwhile, it was very important and very useful.